welcome to the new movie thing show where we get to go to the movie theaters and watch movies that are brand new and then talk about them with you. I'm Trisha Hirschberger. And I'm Raina Scully. And uh, this week we got to see How, How to, to Train, Train Your Dragon, Dragon 2. 2. Raina, quickie review. It was charming, mm -hmm. awesome. I'd go see it again. Awesome. Uh, my quickie review for How to Train Your Dragon Part 2, it was a really excellent kids film. Hmm. I like that, it's true. There were a lot of kids there and they all really loved it. We heard all of them. They all screamed, it was adorable actually. There was one part where one kid <laughs> leaned over to another kid in the audience and explained everything that was going on in very accurate yes. detail. I wanted to hear her <laughs> more. Not, can you pause the movie for a second? Yes. Explain it to me please. Explain it, thank it you, really thank you good. so much for that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the cast in this film, this is a huge top Actor, top Hollywood oh, yeah. build. What's the term? A list. Top baby. build, A list. Yeah. Top build, A <laughs> list. <laughs> Actor lineup. It was um, an incredible cast. Let's see. We have Jay Baruchel, mm -hmm. um, and we have Kristen Wiig mm -hmm. um, as like Tough Nut or Rough Nut. I don't remember the twins, which one's which. Uh, T.J. Miller is the opposite of that. We also have Kate Blanchett, Gerard Butler. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. Listening to all of them was just incredible. I was actually surprised it was Kristen Wiig, and then I was even yeah. more surprised it was Kate Blanchett. Kate yeah, Blanchett. Kate Blanchett, I feel like, was the, the odd one in yeah. this. But you know what? Um, I support the pick. We don't want to say too much mm. about it because we don't want to spoil the plot for you guys who right. haven't seen it yet. Um, but she was definitely an interesting choice. But first response, oh, interesting. Second response, yeah. Yeah. I always have loved Jay Baruchel's voice acting. I know, like, in the first one, in the mm -hmm. first movie, obviously, he plays the same character. Um, but his voice is just so perfectly nerdy. He's Hiccup. Right? Yeah, yeah. he's Hiccup. His voice is I, perfect for Hiccup, Actually, I, think. I thought, uh, specifically in this film, and maybe it's just been too long since I saw the first How to Train Your Dragon, but in this film, I thought he did a good job of capturing that, like, Yes, I'm still a kid, but like on the brink Definitely. of manhood voice. Definitely. It was It good. was in the middle. And it, was it, it worked. I, I believed it. It, it definitely worked. worked. Along with his little animated hairs. Oh, I know. They were not quite scruff. It was so cute. He had like a little bit of stubble. Yeah. They did such a good job animating this. It was yeah. incredible. You so, could see every strand of hair. The look of this film was absolutely perfect. I mean, animation just keeps getting better and mm -hmm. better, but this was just beautiful. And particularly for me, the part that stood out about the animation was that the characters were, they were human-like enough, like you felt right. for them enough, that legitimately there were times that were such heightened emotion in this movie that brought both of us to tears. Yeah. Um, so like for a cartoon <laughs> to do that and for an animated face and animated mm -hmm. eyes to evoke that in an audience is really awesome. It's true. You could even see their like eyes dilating when mm -hmm. like things are happening. I mean, some epic things happen. And um, you can see them like kind of twitching a little bit when they're surprised and when they're like yeah, getting really sad. Good. It was incredible. I don't know. It was That's really realistic. Amazing. Please keep hiring actors though. Don't oh. <laughs> animate every movie, please. This is true. That would be a really big disappointment. Hire real people, please. <laughs> They don't want to be waiters and waitresses forever. Not forever. No. <laughs> the way they animated Toothless and all the other dragons, oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. I love that they really made it look like an animal. I'd love to meet a dragon like the dragons in this movie. Mm -hmm. I would not love to meet a dragon like dragons in Game of Thrones. No, not like those. Never like those. <laughs> <laughs> Never those. <laughs> this movie was written and directed by Dean Dubois. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, that sorry. That sounds good to me. Right? Um, he actually wrote and directed the first film, so you could really tell that the um, movies are very linear. Um, okay. You can truly tell that it's very obvious there was like a five year span that they grew mm. up. You know, and that's yeah. why, you know, um, that, and that kind of made lower. it feel like a different enough movie. Mm -hmm. Like, a lot of times you see sequels and it's like, oh, they just want more money because right. the first one did well at the box right. office. I get it, lame. Um, but this really felt like a separate piece. And it did. I would venture to say that I think the second one's better than the first. <gasps> I know. Oh. Everybody's so upset right now. Um, I do, I just, but maybe it's because the second one's a little bit more adult than the first. It because is. everybody is five years older. It's true. And I'm an adult, not a child. So <laughs> I tend to like the more adult films better. I totally understand that. There really is an adult element to it. Um, I even like how mm -hmm. Astrid and Hiccup's relationship like developed. It was really cute to see that as well. Um. I struggle, I wanna say I like this one more. This one was Ooh, definitely more 
entertaining, but I think the first one just kind of this one was has so a place epic. in my heart. It was epic. That's really what it was. There was so much action. The colors were incredible. Oh, but on that token though, I kind of feel like there was almost too much crammed in. I enjoyed it. It was a, a lot good, of stuff going on. Yeah, it was a good hour and 45 minutes. It was excellent. It flew by. It was a lot crammed but into an hour and 45 minutes. There's a lot. And um, there is one plot point that, again, we're not going to do any spoilers, but there's one plot point in the film that both Raina and I kind of left the theater going, wow, I can't believe they included that. Oh, yeah, um, that was a big surprise. <laughs> we were like, oh, it's it's kinda, like, okay, it's happening. It's kind of <laughs> how you feel uh, the first time you read the fourth book in the Harry Potter series. No spoilers oh. again if you haven't read Harry Potter, but it's Harry Potter decades. and the Goblet of Fire. When you get to the end of that, you're like, oh, not a kid's book anymore. It's kind of that same feeling. <laughs> yeah, it was. Um, but, I mean, that's... But that's what made it really that was good. Part of yeah, the catalyst that made the plot line definitely go where it needed to go, and it made it just that much more adult and real, yes. actually. So mm -hmm. I really, really appreciated that. So my final thoughts on this film: again, I thought it was an excellent kids' film. Mm. I don't know that on a weekend I would personally choose. Like, hey, you know what? I really want to see this weekend a I kids do. animated <laughs> film. There's other things I'd probably go mm -hmm. see first. But if you do have kids or you are in the mood to go see a kids' film, this is I. Think think the best mm. that you could find in a long time. Do you think it's the best of 2014 so oh, far? Oh, no, Lego Movie. Mm. Oh, oh, duh. Yeah, of course. If you're gonna consider Lego right. Movie a kid's film, that takes the cake for me. Um, gotcha. But I thought that this was absolutely excellent. So I give, I, I give How to Train Your Dragon 2 a nine out of 10. <gasps> That's really high. That's big marks. Ooh. I love animated movies. I love kids' movies. I love how wholesome they are. I love how linear they are, easy to understand. Um, so I just enjoyed this movie so much. I have obviously loved the first one as well. Like I said, it really extended the first movie very, very well. Um, aside from the fact that, like I said before, there's a little too much going on. Um, maybe they could have gone with like two arcs of conflict. They went with like four. <laughs> um, I would give this. I give this like a nine out of ten You're as well. Nine because, out of ten. Yeah, because I would Big definitely, marks. I would definitely watch it again, like for okay. sure. But we're not the only ones who got a chance to see this movie. Right now on Rotten Tomatoes, it's received a ninety-two percent from critics and a ninety-three percent from audience. That's so. really high for Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, mega marks from Damn. Rotten Tomatoes. However, on IMDb, it's an eight point six out of ten. A little bit more critical, but you know, it makes sense. I feel like IMDb never really ventures from like seven to low eight. So an 8.6 for IMDb is actually pretty good. Legit. So if it's under seven on IMDb, don't see that movie. Uh, so thank you guys so much for watching this episode of the new movie thing show. I hope you get a chance to go out to the movie theaters this weekend and uh, then you can write to us on the Twitters and we can talk spoilers and stuff if you get a chance to see it. I'm Trisha Hirschberger. I'm Raina Scully. What should we do now? Mm, like Friday. today. <gasps> we gotta get down on Friday. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> party and party and yeah! <laughs>